Welcome back to another Mobile Centrix Tips and Tricks. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you a repair. Today I have an iPhone 12 mini that decided it wanted to go swimming in a pool. And it didn't like that very much because it started to boot loop and then just stopped basically powering on at all. My goal today is to walk through kind of a step-by-step -step process that I would go about diagnosing and fixing a water damage device. Let's get into the video. Here I have an iPhone 12 mini. I'm looking at it because it's supposedly went swimming in a pool. And when I look on the inside, I do see signs of corrosion. And when I plug it in, nothing seems to be happening. Oh, and there's an Apple logo. And it disappeared. And I click the power button and the Apple logo appears again. And it's off again. So let's see if we can figure out what is going on with this phone. And it looks like it wants to boot again, but it's obviously not going through the full boot cycle. Something is happening and it's causing it to basically boot loop. So let's see if we can isolate the component that might be doing that. Sometimes a faulty charge port can cause a boot loop. So well, the first thing I'm gonna check is TriStar here. Got device connected, let's test it. it says fail. So I think that it doesn't like the charge port. Let's take a look in there and see if we can find anything. Yeah, I definitely feel a little bit of like lint in there. There we go. Let me get a brush out. Let's get some of those bristles back in there. Pretty good flowing. some 99 isopropyl alcohol in there. Let's scrub it again. Let's see if we get any change now. Device connected. So it's okay now. And it passes TriStar. So is this going to be as simple as the charge port had something wrong with it? Let's find out. We'll plug it back in. And we've got an Apple logo. Let's see if it'll boot up the all the way this time. Still not booting all the way. And we got a boot loop. So something else is preventing it from turning on. So let's start to poke around and see if we can find some corrosion that's causing the issue. So the second most common and the third most common thing are the charge port and even the proximity sensor. So I'm going to disconnect both the charge port and prox and see if it still boot loops. And we get an Apple logo and it boot loops. So I know that it's not those because it's still boot looping. So now I'm just going to disassemble the phone basically and let's disconnect almost every single connector. I'm going to reconnect the charge port so that we can prompt it to boot. But everything else is now disconnected. Power button, all the cameras and everything like that. So if it's one of those components, we won't get a boot loop. And there's the Apple logo. Checking the board for a short with my hand and I feel it's getting pretty warm. So there's probably a board issue here going on but and there it goes so it's still looping and here comes the logo again so yeah there's definitely an issue and i'm going to conclude that it's a board issue so let's go ahead and take it out and uh we'll go from there
And here's a little trick if you're struggling, add some isopropyl alcohol. Sometimes the adhesive just doesn't want to let go and the isopropyl alcohol will cause it to let go without wrinkling the battery at all. Just like that. Especially these top ones being so thin. And now we'll take the logic board out and let's take a look and see if we can find any corrosion on it. So it looks pretty clean. Actually right here in the top, I definitely see corrosion there. Probably got in between the board layers and over here, but that looks good. Oh, there's some more right here. You can see, there you go. Here's a better shot. Definitely corroded on the top there. We might have some corrosion that's uh, bridging things together in the layers and there's some more on the back side. So I'm probably gonna have to separate these boards to uh, make this work. And one of the things that I like to do is save all of the stickers and the mesh and everything. So I'm just going to show you my little tips and tricks on to how to do that. We'll peel up the stickers on the back gently and don't tear the 5G antenna in this process. Take some isopropyl alcohol and we'll flood the sponge uh, protectors around the connectors. And this will help loosen the adhesive so that they'll come off in one piece and be able to be reused. I've got my heat, my heat platform here with the iPhone 12 mini. Uh, I carved out a part of the metal here to accommodate the 5G antenna. Go ahead and slide that in, clamp it down, turn it on. We're gonna select the 1212 board, hit OK. So that's gonna put us at 230 degrees Celsius. Now we can take our logic board, put it down inside. And I'm going to clamp down on the SIM tray. All right, we'll go ahead and turn this on. We'll heat up there nice and quickly. Almost there. Now we've got uh, two minutes roughly to uh, get this off before it'll automatically start to cool down. Now the 12 series does take, in my experience, more time to heat up. I won't uh, really be expecting to have it off until I'm getting close to that timer countdown. There, I can see it wanting to start to separate. And I've got about 45 seconds left, so we're, we're good on time. I'm gonna automatically make it start to cool down because I'm there already. <laughs> and we'll let things cool off. Because we did see some around the border, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe down all of the perimeter here. Because I believe what happened is when we heated it up with the flux, it probably kind of dissolved the corrosion a little bit. A lot of the time that's all it is, is the water will get to the edge of the board, connect two lines that shouldn't be connected, like the ground to a data line. And then you'll have the issue that we were having. Let's go connect this up to a power supply and see what we get. All right, so here we've got our iPhone 12 mini board and here is the power button connector. And I know that these two, one being ground, this is where I need to touch for the power button. Got my power supply set at 3.85, which is right where I need it. And I've got my iPhone 12 mini connector here. I go ahead and plug it in and it doesn't automatically pull any amps, which means there's no short on the main power rails. Let's go ahead and prompt it to boot. There's the amp 
the logo. Let's get nice and hot on the back, but there we've got it boot up all the way. I got both boards in there. Probably got the power supply connected up. Go ahead and prompt it to boot. And we'll see if it'll boot up in the entire way. And now it's boot up. It's really dim. Oh, I don't have the proximity sensor connected, so that's why, it, but the touch works. Yeah, everything seems to be working okay. I've connected the prox up, so now the brightness is all the way up. We can see everything's working. Yeah, let's go ahead and put these back together. Oh, let's go ahead and take this out. And gently set this aside and get our heating platform out again. One of the nice things about this platform is you can leave you know, thermal, the thermal paste kind of behind because we're going to be putting pressure that'll prevent it from going anything. So go ahead and add some flux around the perimeter here lightly. Now we'll stick this back on. And because I was able to pull it up perfectly straight, we don't have to reball this one. So for this one, we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure, make sure everything's lined up perfectly. Really take my time to make sure I like the alignment. Now we'll go ahead and turn on the platform again and watch it heat up. And we'll watch it kind of close that gap as it gets up to temperature. Nearly there. There we go. There's the temperature. You can see some movement. 60 seconds left. You can see how much how much more closed it is there. Before I throw it back in the phone, I'm just going to connect it here up to the power supply. And uh, let's just test it out. Already booted it up, put in the passcode. And yeah, everything seems to be working just fine. So let's uh, go ahead and put it back in the phone. Ready, set, go. I'm standing in the red inside a payphone Just wanna break, no I'm not gonna give in Take a last shot, Michael J. Wayne No, I'm not a robot, I'm in my own skin And there we go Let's see, we've got 5G service there Sees the Wi-Fi's Getting a, bus, a bunch of messages More messages And turn it off for now <laughs> Alright, we'll give it some new battery adhesive And we'll put back the brackets and screws Now we can close it on up and we'll put back the panel of screws and we'll let this charge up a bit. This one's all fixed. Hopefully it doesn't see the bottom of the pool again. Looks like the camera's working. Looks like the selfie camera's working. So there you go. Now you see We've got a working iPhone once again. I've gone through and tested everything out. It's all good to go. It's not always as easy as it just was for me to fix a water damaged device. But the process, but the process is always the same. Starting with isolating the issues that might be causing it by eliminating components that would cause it from not booting up all the way down to finding if there's an issue on the logic board and fixing it like we had to in this case. Hopefully this video earned a like and that you learned something. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.